In this episode of Behind the Song, let's take a closer look at the lyrics of a song that always makes us think of someone we're missing this time of year. 2,000 Miles by The Pretenders. Released on the band's Learning to Crawl album in the U.S. in late 1983, the third album for The Pretenders, the song was written by frontwoman Chrissy Hind, and it is about missing someone. But the real story is even sadder and closer to home for Hind than what it appears to be at first listen. And she would know a thing or two about distance making the holiday season hard By 83, she had been in England for a decade, having moved to London in 1973, far away from her hometown of Akron, Ohio, when she was just 22 years old. A self-described misfit, Hind admits that she never really felt she belonged in the middle-class life of her parents and her older brother, Terry. Her father was a former Marine who worked for the phone company, and her mom was a secretary. But Christine Ellen Hind was artistic, interested in music and bands, not boys, and she never went out on a single date while in high school, she says. She was an art student at Kent State University, where she was briefly in a band with fellow Akron native Mark Mothersbaugh of the band Devo. In 1970, a friend of Hind's was one of the four Kent State students killed on campus while protesting the expansion of the Vietnam War. Three years later, Hind took off to London to pursue her art and music dreams, not really sure what exactly she wanted to do, and ended up landing a job at the music magazine NME. Through her work at the magazine, she befriended other music journalists, and more importantly, the bands bubbling up on the scene at the time, punk rock outfits including Johnny Rotten and Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols. In fact, Hind later quit writing about music and took a job at Vivian Westwood's punk rock fashion house, Sex, which was ground zero for the Pistols and other bands on the scene at the time. She had found her place, her people, and her spiritual home in London, but her own musical dreams failed to materialize over and over again, at least at first. She tried to join bands for years, all the while writing and playing guitar. She was passed over for bands with Mick Jones of The Clash, rejected from The Damned, got the odd gig playing guitar on the road, but never her own band, which was her goal. Finally, in 1978, she caught interest from the owner of the Real Records label on the strength of a demo tape. And it was then that she solidified the initial lineup of what would shortly become The Pretenders, named after the song The Great Pretender by The Platters. Pete Farndon first on bass. James Honeyman Scott on guitar, Martin Chambers on drums, and Hind out front on vocals and guitar. Their self-titled debut album was released in late 1979 in the U.S. and included Brass in Pocket, which became a hit worldwide. The entire album is one of the most highly praised debuts in rock and roll. Chrissy Hind and her band had arrived. The second album, Pretenders 2, was quickly released in 1981. And not too long after that, tragedy struck. In June of 1982, Hind and Chambers called a meeting with Honeyman Scott and Farndon in London. Honeyman Scott had been in the U.S. with his wife working on a project there and had to fly back to the U.K. upon being called. The purpose of the surprise meeting was to fire Pete Farndon from the band because of his drug problems, which had been escalating steadily. Two days later, on June 16th, Honeyman Scott was found dead of heart failure caused by cocaine. He was just 25 years old. These two events were devastating for the remaining members. Honeyman Scott was not just the guitarist for the band— He helped shape the sound in Hines' head with his musical gift for creating melodies that complemented her unique singing style. And by introducing a jangly guitar sound that Johnny Marr of the band The Smiths has said he idolized. Further, he had co-written Brass in Pocket with Hind, the first major hit for the band. And isn't it just so ironic that it was Honeyman Scott that was found overdosed just two short days after the meeting, which resulted in Farndon being fired for his escalating drug use. Adding to the shock of it all, 
Less than a year after this, Pete Farndon was found in his bathtub, dead of a heroin overdose, in April of 1983 at just 30 years old. Hind and Chambers were now the only two remaining living members of the Pretenders. And so there was a hiatus that occurred for Hind and Chambers. They eventually regrouped after Honeyman Scott's death and began recording new material with new musicians, eventually solidifying the new lineup with the addition of Robbie McIntosh on guitar and Malcolm Foster on bass. And the songs for the third Pretenders album were recorded. And it was during this time that the sad news came about Farndon's death. And meanwhile, Hind became a new mother having given birth to her eldest daughter, Natalie Ray. The child's father is none other than revered songwriter Ray Davies of the Kinks, with whom Hind had a relationship that ended soon after Natalie's birth. And the album is named after her in a way. Hind says she was raising her daughter and watching her learn to crawl around on the floor as a baby, which inspired the Learning to Crawl title. And on that album, the last song on side two is the song Hind wrote as a tribute to Honeyman Scott, her friend. 2,000 Miles starts like this. He's gone, 2,000 miles. It's very far. The snow is falling down. Gets colder day by day. I miss you. The children will sing. He'll be back at Christmas time. Now, how many times have you heard this song played in the month of December and thought, wow, that's a really pretty song? And maybe you missed someone that was gone while you were listening to it. There's something about this time of year that brings those people back to us in our memories, no matter how long ago moments were shared or how far away they physically are now. It's a remembering time of year. And Chrissy Hind gave us an understated yet deeply personal song for it. And it goes on. In these frozen and silent nights, sometimes in a dream you appear. Outside, under the purple sky, diamonds in the snow sparkle. Our hearts were singing. It felt like Christmas time. Two thousand miles is very far through the snow. I'll think of you wherever you go. He's gone two thousand miles. It's very far. The snow is falling down. Gets colder day by day. I miss you. It's funny how no matter how long ago it was that the people that really touch us have left us, we can still picture them clearly or hear their voice in our heads. How something like snow on the ground can conjure a memory back up for us of happier times together. It's one of the most bittersweet things about the human condition how we retain the mark of those who have gone on, on the inside, and how this particular season has a way of making those marks itch just a little bit more than usual. And the song ends, I can hear people singing, it must be Christmas time. 2,000 Miles is not the biggest hit on the Learning to Crawl album. Middle of the Road and Back on the Chain Gang were the songs that burned up the charts in the U.S. But this song became an immediate hit in the U.K., and we hear it across the pond here every holiday season. The Learning to Crawl album went to number five on the Billboard 200, and even through further lineup changes, the Pretenders continued to have hits worldwide through the mid-90s and have sold millions of albums. Not bad for a misfit girl from Akron who found her place in the world through music. The band were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2005. And at the induction, Hind said, We're paying tribute to James Honeyman Scott and Pete Farndon, without whom we wouldn't be here. Chrissy Hind went on to have a second daughter, Yasmin, in 1985, while she was married to Jim Kerr of the band Simple Minds. She later married and divorced a sculptor from Columbia, and along the way she became a vegetarian, an animal rights activist, and started practicing Hinduism. She splits residences between her beloved London and her old hometown of Akron, Ohio, exactly 3,744 miles apart. She is the only remaining original member of the Pretenders, the one constant in the band over the decades, 
and she continues to release music with her band. She's also written her autobiography titled Reckless and continues to paint and create visual artwork as well. For many girls, Christy Hind belongs on the Mount Rushmore of female rockers. Not just for her incredible songs, but for her swagger, her unyielding presence, her spirit, her unapologetic attitude about being where she belongs, in front of the boys. A punk rocker, born rock and roller. Madonna, among many others, cite her as a primary influence. I met Chrissy Hind once on a film set in Los Angeles, and she was so cool that she scared me to death. I was afraid to say anything at all, but I managed to squeak out a thank you for all the songs, to which she graciously replied, ah, you're welcome, with a smile, squinting through her famously long bangs. And every year, in the days between late November and December 25th, her song, 2,000 Miles, written as a heartfelt tribute to a boy she knew who passed on far too soon, brings back memories of people I have loved, who have made their mark and then gone on very far. A gentle reminder that it must be Christmas time. I'm Janda, and this has been Behind the Song. Special thanks to Christian Lane for the music you hear on this podcast. Subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Podcast One, or stream for free at WDRV.com, Behind the Song, or on the Drive app. Subscribe to the Behind the Song podcast on YouTube and see the video episode. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Jandalane Radio and on Twitter at Jandalane. On the way, another episode about a song in the holiday spirit and more classic rock and roll. If you have a song you'd like to hear more about in an upcoming episode, just drop me a note in the comments and let me know. Thanks for being a part of Behind the Song.